see, God looks at us in our current state and sees us in our intended state. Your breakthrough may not come the way somebody else got their breakthrough. Your breakthrough may come a totally different way. God has given you the victory and they call it the triumph is yours. Health is a mindset. Wealth is a mindset. Prosperity is a mindset. It's amazing to me that many people blame their circumstances and blame different things that seem to be your driving force of their life except their own thinking. And the Bible lets us know that if you change your thinking, you can change your life. And as we begin to explore this truth, the law of thinking, the creating a new reality, I pray that the Spirit of God will minister to you and that you will receive a new revelation, a fresh revelation of the things that are determining your outcomes in life. As you act accordingly by choosing, say choosing. choosing. As you act according by choosing your thoughts, you will begin to get different results. Understand that nothing in life just happens. Nothing in life is just a coincidence, a happenstance. Most people want to leave the life to coincidence. They want to leave their life to assumptions and accidents, etc. But if you are maximizing in your potential and come into the fullness of God's will for your life, you will have to become an active participant in the designing of your life. You either live your life by default or by design. It is the will of God for you to participate in the execution of creating the kind of life that you love living. As we begin to understand this even more, it is God's will for you to have life and have it more of what? Abundantly. As you begin to move into this area, we're going to understand that the quality of our lives is based on the quality of the questions we ask. You see, thoughts that you think can be empowering or disempowering. The questions that you ask can be empowering or disempowering. The quality of our lives are based on the quality of the questions we ask. So if we ask questions, why did this happen to me? Why am I always going through this? Why am I always getting hurt? Why do I keep falling back? Why does I'm not able to keep the relationship or walk in the areas that I know that God has for me? My life is to have an abundant life. Then why am I always going through these things? When you begin to ask those kind of questions, you create a victim mentality. Victim mentality. The victim mentality has to do with accusations, accusing, blaming, and complaining. That's the ABCs of a victim mentality. Accusation. I'm accusing, I'm blaming you, and I'm complaining about this. So when people begin to speak like that, that's a victim speaking. You want to ask the different kind of questions. In other words, you want to ask questions that are empowering. Questions like this. How is what happening to me helping me to fulfill my mission? How this, what has happened to me, causing me to be strengthened, causing my skills to be sharpened, causing me to understand that something is emerging inside of me that God wants to bring forth. What is it that God, you want to bring out of this that I haven't seen yet? Because the quality of your questions you ask and determines your destiny. Now, I think we have come to the time in history in the world where people not only want to know, but they really want to know how. Look what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, say moment. moment. The light affliction, the light test, and what you're going, it's a light thing. It's, it's just for a moment. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, work it for us 
work it for us, work it for us, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, why does it work for us? Why does it work an eternal weight of glory? Because it doesn't work automatically. It only works for those who understand what the next verse says. It works while we look not at the things that are seen. If you're focusing on the things that are seen, you're going to go by your sense realm. You're going to go by externals. You're going to go and allow the dictates of the world to dictate your world and create your reality. But there's a world that's beyond what you see. There's a world beyond your five senses. He says, while you look not at the things that are what? Seen, but the things that are what? Not seen. So there's an unseen world. Amen. There's an unseen dimension. And when you can drop your guards to be able to see beyond where you are and allow that world to become more real to you than the world you see out here, you own your way of creating your reality, a new reality. And talk about creating a new reality now. So when you live by habit or live in a habit, you think the same thoughts, you perform the same actions, and you live by the same emotions. But secretly expect their life to change. And what they keep getting is the same cycle, it's the same thing, because every day by habit, they're thinking the same thoughts, they're performing the same actions, they're living by the same emotions, and secretly inside, they want their life to change. Or are they expecting their life to change? How you think, how you act, how you feel, it's called your personality. Your personality creates your personal reality. Your personal reality came out of your personality. And if you're thinking 60 to 70,000 thoughts in a day, and 90% of those thoughts are the same thought that were yesterday, the same thoughts leads to the same choices. And the same choices leads to the same behaviors. And the same behavior creates the same experience. And the same emotions create the same emotion that drives your thought. If you're going to create your reality, you've got to change your personality because your personality creates your personal reality. And so the hardest place to change in creating the life that you desire is learning how being defined by a vision of the future instead of a memory of the past. If you're feeling the same way, your emotions and your feelings are the byproduct of your past experience, it means, number one, nothing new is happening in your life. <laughs> number two, those emotions are keeping you anchored in the past. If your thoughts are the language of the mind and feelings are the language of the body, how you think and how you feel creates the state of your being. So most people are biologically, neurologically, chemically, genetically connected to their past. So the fundamental question is, can you believe in a future that you can't see? Can you believe in a future that the natural man cannot see, but you can see in the unseen realm that's something that God has put inside of me. And I'm, I'm going to come back and teach you about the inner eyes, how to, how to see it from the inner, the inner eyes. But i got to lay the foundation first. But if you can catch a vision of your future and live by a vision of the future instead 
of a memory of the past, you're on your way to creating a new reality and you begin to step into a place that you've never stepped in before and you begin to change the way you think, change the way you act, and you change the way you feel. You see, even right now, if you feel in the same way you felt yesterday and yesterday and the day before that, nothing's changed. Do you understand your feelings are powerful? Yeah. Most times see, when I came up in the Christian dawn, I came through the teaching, came through the faith camp, came through the errors and models and so forth. And a lot of times in the faith camp, they didn't teach you no so feelings. No, you don't go by your feelings. You go by your feelings. And I understand that. I understand that in a dimension, we're going to walk by faith. But don't deny, don't cast the baby out with the bath water. Your feelings have energy. How you feel is a language of your body. And your body is picking up signals from your brain. The way you think, your thoughts, and the way you act, and your expressions of your feelings. Here's the point. Can you believe in a future that you can't see and experience that your senses has not yet perceived. When you think a thought enough times, your mind is charged to look like the experience as though it's already occurred. You see, when you, when you ask the right questions, how does it feel to be in love? How does it feel to be in the right relationship? How does it feel to be wealthy? How does it feel to be successful? When you ask empowering questions, what happens when you ask the questions regardless, you ask the questions, the frontal lobe of your brain, which is called the frontal lobe, sends it's like, a, it's like a message center, creative center. It begins to scan all the other parts of your brain and sends messages to the neurons to look for the things that you have learned, things that you have stored up in memory that cause you to feel what that feel like. And it begins to look for ways for that to happen. So... When that frontal lobe of the brain, it begins to scan like a, it begins to scan the landscape of the other parts of your brain, and these neurons begin to fire off in these different areas to locate areas that's already there that you associated love with, that you associated wealth with, health with. And it brings it back to you. Now, when I get into the other areas and show you that if you have some bad experiences in the areas of love or relationships or walking in hell, that's going to come up too. And the thing is that as it comes up, you begin to evaluate it knowing how to dislodge it. And when you begin to dislodge it by identifying what it is, then you can put in the other areas of the word of God so that you can begin to create your reality by the new way of your thinking, the way of acting, the way of feeling. See, what you think about, you bring about. And this is ancient truth. It's not anything new. It's what, what you think about the most is what you're becoming. Because you're... Your life always move in line with your most dominant thought. See, the most dominant thought that you have, your life is going in that direction. So if you're going to change the way you live, change your, your finances, change your, it's got to begin in the thought because we live in the world of thoughts, beliefs, and feelings. Then can we emotionally embrace a future reality? Now, you have to believe that you feel abundance before your wealth occurred. You have to feel in love before your new relationship happens. So we're not defining reality by our senses, 
because we are not waiting for anything outside of us to change how we feel inside. So now we're going from cause, the law of cause effect to what affect the cause. So the effect inside of you is get the feeling of it. How would it feel, love? And see, this comes to contemplation. It comes to meditation. It comes to get in a place that how would it feel you to be a multimillionaire? What would you be doing? What, where would you be going? And some of you say, I don't know, just give me, give me $100, you know, just give me $10,000. Forget about the millions right now. No, no. See, there's no limit. Somebody says the sky's the limit. No, the sky's not the limit. Your belief is the limit. Man, that's right. You see, God looks at us in our current state and sees us in our intended state.